The Real Cost of Owning a Private Island When it comes to luxury, owning a mansion and a private jet are both excellent indicators of financial success. However, one thing stands out above the rest, owning your very own private island. It may sound like a dream to be lounging in the sun with a drink in hand thousands of miles away from the nearest person, but owning a private island is a costly endeavor. Today, we'll look at how much it costs and try to find the answer to the big question, is owning a private island worth it? Welcome back to our channel. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on post notifications, like, comment on our channel Luxury Master. Let's look at it now. When purchasing a private island, the first and most crucial step is buying the island itself. Sure, you have fantasies about cabanas in the white sand and maybe even a golf course on the north side of the island. Still, finding the perfect location to build a foundation on and make those dreams a reality starts with finding the ideal place to build a foundation on and make those dreams a reality. That being said, the cost of your island varies drastically depending on where you buy it from. Islands for under $200,000 can be purchased in Canada, which has the highest number of private islands for sale anywhere in the world. If you're tight on cash, you can even buy an island for less than $100,000 if you're thrifty. If you want to own a piece of paradise in Nova Scotia, you can buy a 6-acre island for less than half the price of a typical home. However, because the temperatures around the half island can drop to as low as unfavorable 22 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, the island is only feasible to live on during the summer. Fortunately for you, 65000 is less than half the cost of a typical home. In most cases, when you think about a private island, you do not picture a place with icy cold waters and sparse vegetation. Instead, you imagine a place with sandy beaches and palm trees where flip-flops are considered formal attire. The Caribbean, which is made up of thousands of islands with rolling hills, sprawling sandy beaches and crystal clear waters, is what most people think of when they think about a private island. There are plenty of islands to choose from in the Caribbean to create the tropical oasis of your dreams. And, surprisingly, the prices aren't prohibitively high. If you settle for a smaller piece of land in a more remote location, you can purchase an island between one and three million dollars. Still, if you're looking for a more oversized island in one of the more popular and desirable areas of the Caribbean, the price can range anywhere between one and ten million dollars. Island chains with a lot of popularity include the Exumas, the Abaco Islands, and the Berry Islands. These islands have an advantage that remote islands do not have. They are close to larger towns and cities, making them more accessible to visitors and property owners alike. Consider the following example. The island of Spectabilis in the Exumas is 460 acres in size and contains dozens of white sand beaches, scenic hilltop views, and plenty of potential building space. It is only 230 miles from Miami and only 60 miles from the nation's capital. The Exumas are expensive, but it is easily accessible. And it comes with the bonus of being able to say, yes, I own an island in the Exumas. Then there are the more remote areas of the Caribbean like a tiny ragged island, a 700-acre island that is listed for $35 million, which is almost double the land for well under half the price of Spectabilis. And that's not all. The tiny ragged island has two ponds, which means you have. The islands we've looked at all have one thing in common. They're underdeveloped at first glance. This may not seem like a big deal. After all, if you have the money to buy a private island, undoubtedly building a house on the said island shouldn't be a problem, right? Unfortunately, this isn't the case. When you buy a private island, you're also buying a piece of land. On a private island of one's own, you're not just paying for the land on which to construct a house. It takes much more time and effort than that to purchase an island. For starters, you must determine if it is possible to build on the island. Places like the Caribbean have strict environmental regulations regarding the building. Because the region's ecosystem is so fragile, an environmental impact study is required before any changes to the island you have purchased. 
An environmental impact study will cost you at least $50,000. These environmental laws are also commonplace in Canada, where endangered animals may call the lake and ocean islands home. After all, you wouldn't want to evict cute little critters like this, would you? In Ontario, for example, you're only permitted to build if there is more than an acre of buildable land on the island. This means that purchasing a super tiny island for the price of your monthly paycheck isn't worth it. Unless you plan on camping on top of the expensive environmental study that must take place before you begin construction, there are dozens of environmental protection laws that will increase the cost of your build, such as how you collect water and how you dispose of waste. If your island is miles and miles away from the nearest town with hotels, as Little Ragged Island is in the Caribbean, you're looking at some massive cost to get your construction crew on site, let alone building a way for your preferred mode of transportation to reach the island. You can make an airstrip, but most estimates put the cost of that somewhere upward. In that case, purchasing a developed island is much easier than buying an undeveloped peninsula. For example, Frozen K, located in the Berry Island chain of the Bahamas, costs $17 million and is easily accessible by boat and seaplane. It features white powder beaches, lush rainforests, and a six-bedroom, six-bathroom residence that measures a whopping 4,145 square feet. There's also a heated swimming pool, of course. In addition, there is an 806-acre private island for sale. Owning a private island has the beautiful benefit of providing additional income. Still, it would be a remiss of me not to mention the other benefits that come with owning a piece of paradise in the first place. Having your escape miles and miles away from the nearest person is a joy unlike any other. You are waking up and walking down to the beach, sipping wine on the deck that is yours, overlooking the ocean in your underwear if you want. After all, it's your island and you make the rules. There are a variety of reasons why people dream of owning private islands. That being said, there are a variety of reasons why people dream of owning remote islands. The big question is, is owning a private island worth it? Well, that's up to you to decide whether the insane costs, time-consuming regulations, and precise transportation of building supplies and amenities are worthwhile in exchange for being able to lounge on an island you can call home. What do you think? And what would you name your private island if you had one? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you love this video, please leave a like and subscribe to Luxury Channel. We'll see you at the next video.